Hi, my name is Marshall, and this is Waveform. Sound design can be tricky. Most of the time when you're watching a movie or playing a game, the sounds you're hearing aren't exactly what you're seeing on screen. For example, what are you listening to right now? Rain in my backyard, right? Well, not quite. What you're actually listening to is bacon frying in a pan. The reason this is deceptive is because of a technique called layering. Let's take it a bit further. Here's a clip from Jurassic Park. The Velociraptor's roar has been created by layering together two animals. See if you can figure out what they are. Got it? The first sound was a dolphin we recorded underwater, and it made this high-pitched scream. It was really horrific. And then I would combine that with a walrus. The walrus had a deep, resonant chest cavity roar. And between the two, it blended into a single scream that sounded like a scary animal who was also big. Both of these examples deal with familiar sounds. We have certain expectations when we see footage of rain or of dinosaurs that they will sound a certain way. But what happens when the audience has no expectation and we're making something foreign and new? Rather than heading right to the computer or a synthesizer, it's often better to start with mechanical sound, something that exists in the real world. This gives the sound credibility and makes it feel real. If you stretch a slinky out and tap one end with a metal object, this happens. It's layering that takes us from that to this. And this works because our brains are really good at matching sound with picture. And as sound designers, that plays to our advantage. It allows us to create effects that otherwise would seem out of place or inappropriate. Here's what I mean. Take a look at this gameplay from Hyperlight Drifter and pay attention to the white pillar. That sound is made up of a bunch of processed metal recordings, but more importantly, it just fits. The soundscape of the whole game feels like it was recovered from a corrupt hard drive. It's grainy and unrecognizable, just like the art style. Sound designer Akash Thakar reveals his layering process. So we have a whole bunch of stuff working together to create this. I never, almost never nail it on the first try. There's a lot of trial and error, which is kind of the fun part because you never really know where you're going to end up. It's tough to write a conclusion to this video because there's no magical formula to layering. It's all about experimentation. But I think there's one important lesson that we can learn from each of the clips. One. Combine content with complementary frequencies, like the dolphin and the walrus. Look for sounds to fill the parts of the spectrum that you're missing. This approach makes things sound full-bodied and powerful. Two, even if the sound doesn't exist in the real world, try creating it with things that do. When you use sounds gathered in the outside world, the real world, and you bring them into a science fiction film, you get the credibility of those sounds to sell to the audience the reality of what's really just a very uh, fantastic world. Three, be sure every sound you make fits in the world you're building. If the graphics are glitchy, make the sounds glitchy. If everything looks cartoony, try going for more hyperrealism. Doing this is essential to building a distinct, believable world. And four, don't be afraid to deceive your audience. If it works, it works. Thanks for watching. And if you have any other ideas of sound topics you'd like to see covered in this show, then just leave a comment.